Okay, let's uh, let's get started, uh, Zen. Um, so my name is Varun Malik. For everyone here who doesn't know me, uh, I'm the CEO of a new age consulting firm called Consolidon. Uh, Consolidon is new age in the sense that we use um, boutique consulting firms to deliver our projects rather than uh, hiring consultants who deliver projects. Um, we, uh, we've, uh, we're we hosting this uh, web summit and uh, Aarti, I don't know if you've been to one of our uh, sessions before, uh, but Paul has been, I know, he's hosted one session as well. Uh, but we're hosting this seven day uh, web summit in which we're doing uh, various talks on sev uh, you know, several topics. Uh, we've had uh, some very, very interesting panel discussions and webinars uh, over the last six to seven days. Um, today's okay. discussion is uh, uh, very interesting. Uh, Zed actually, I, I should tell you, he manages our uh, accounts as well. So we have outsourced our accounting to Zed. Um, okay. It'll be It'll be very interesting to hear why he thinks we should outsource our accounting as well. <laughs> uh, and I'm really, really looking forward to the session, Zed. Uh, over to you. All right. Good afternoon to everyone. Uh, my name is Zed. I'm CEO of Inclusive Consulting. We are a management consultancy in accounting and VAT service provider. Uh, just to give you a little background about myself, I have about 20 plus years of experience uh, in accounting, auditing, finance, taxation. By qualifications, I am a certified public accountant and chartered global management accountant from the U.S. I work in the U.S. with Baker Tilly and Deloitte, one of the big fours, for about uh, six years. Uh, then I moved to the corporate uh, sector where I served as the uh, head of internal audit and uh, head of accounting and tax, head of finance and CFO of multiple different businesses including consumer goods, including commodity trading and rice manufacturing. And then I moved to the UAE to start my own uh, consulting firm and accounting and VAT services uh, providers uh, for uh, the UAE market and for the G GCC region for the past uh, six years as well. So the variety of experience that I have had in the working in the US in various different sectors, then working in the corporate sectors in multiple different businesses, has given me the ability to understand business operations as a whole and not just the finance operations. So that ability has helped us provide a different perspective from the business owner's point of view uh, and the uh, uh, entrepreneurship and uh, uh, small, medium-sized enter uh, enterprise point of view as to how they can better manage their financial services and the financial requirements to be able to run the business better. Uh, and there, with that perspective, we are able to be one of those service providers that actually become your financial CFO and the financial service provider as a business advisor so that you can get a maximum value addition from that services. Uh, so that is the topic for today as to why is it why is it a good idea or why is it an advantage for people who outsource their accounting? And this is geared especially for SME sector. Most of the large corporates already have their in-house accounting department. And after, during the pandemic and post-pandemic scenario, what people are experiencing even today, even the large companies are now re-evaluating their entire accounting and finance function because that is a big fixed cost. And where most of the employees were working from home in the past uh, one year, they realized that, you know, a lot of these work doesn't need to be done in the office with the in-house team. A lot of this work can also be outsourced. So they are also uh, uh, going towards uh, the evaluation of doing a co-sourcing arrangement. It's not a full outsource. It's a co-sourcing arrangement. So this has now become a more popular topic, even for the uh, larger organizations. Uh, so going for and uh, for the structure of this uh, session, what we will do is that I will go through my thoughts and uh, my different pointers of uh, what you should be evaluating on. And then uh, if you have any questions, please use the raise hand feature and then we can ask you to unmute your mic and then you can ask the question. We can address that at that point in time. Also, at the end, I will leave those last uh, 10 to 15 minutes specifically for question and answers as well. So if you can, uh, if there's, it's not a burning question. You can wait till the end to see if it gets answers towards the uh, uh, different parts of the presentation. If not, then you can ask those questions towards the end. Okay, now the traditional answer, which most of the people already know of and the most of the people that would give you upfront 
is that the reason for outsourcing accounting and uh, services is redu reduced cost and it gives the ability to the SME owners more time and focus on the core business areas. That's the traditional and typical answer you will receive. However, in the past few years, even before the pandemic, this thinking has started to switch towards another direction as well. These are not just the only two benefits that you would receive for outsourcing accounting services. Now, out, now the new way of thinking is more towards, it, towards using this outsource accounting model as a strategic tool. And I will give you more details on how you can use this as a strategic tool to advance your business objectives and goals. Uh, before that, I will share a survey uh, with you for about 1,700 small and medium-sized business owners that had actually outsourced accounting. So it's not a survey of people who want to outsource. It's a survey of companies that have actually outsourced and experienced uh, that outsourced model and to see what are the benefits that they have been able to achieve from that. So in terms of soft return on investment, 80% of the companies that were surveyed, they said, that it, yes, it did give them more time to focus on the core business area. But it also 68% of them said that it makes the accounting process and the whole system much easier because you are working now with a partner who has expertise in this area. So you don't have to worry about a lot of things. So for example, 53% said they worry less about making mistakes because they are not the accounting experts and they're now having to, uh, uh, the, the small and medium sized companies are not able to hire a full-fledged CFO, a full-fledged finance department that can run on its own. So they hire like accounting interns, like Paul was mentioning, they hire a, 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 a junior accounting resources, a couple of people just to manage the day-to-day -day accounting uh, uh, requirements. But at the back of the mind, because they don't have the expertise, they are not able to effectively supervise that team and ensure that they're doing things correctly and they're not making a mistake. And a lot of times what happens is that you end up finding out about the mistake when it's already too late. Either an, uh, a penalty is imposed or a loss has occurred. And that's when you realize that these for these past several months or several years, these mistakes have been made. So or more than half of the companies felt that when you are working with an outsourced partner, which has expertise in that area, you feel more comfortable that there is a less, much, much less risk of making mistakes. 31% felt more prepared to take business decisions. And we will talk about that. This trend is now changing. It was much less before. And now this trend is changing. And we'll talk about how that can help you. In terms of hardcore uh, financial impact and returns on investment, 28% actually in experienced better profitability versus 16% of the companies that did not outsource. Similarly, 23% of the companies experienced increase in their revenue growth versus only 14% who did not outsource. And similar, similar percentage was experienced for the overall business growth, the size of the business, the volume of the business uh, was able to uh, be better for 23% of the companies who outsource versus only 12% who did not outsource. So these are some hardcore savings and hardcore financial uh, uh, impact and benefits for the companies that have actually experienced the outsourcing model. So now let me go over and tell you how these they were able to achieve this and what's the new way of thinking and the new side of the strategy to use this outsourcing model as a strategic tool. There are four basic pillars of that. Uh, there is expertise that you gain from that model. There is the ability to grow your business. And there is compliance aspect where you feel much more comfortable that things are more in compliance with the laws and regulations. There are no mistakes that are being made that you don't have the risk of having a penalty or a, a sanction on you. And there is an advantage of technological innovations as well. Uh, so I will, in one by one on all of these four areas, I will go more in details in two ways. First, I will tell you what is the biggest challenge most of the companies in SME sector and the business owners feel when they are looking for that outsource model. And this is why this outsource model works for them. And then I'll give you a solution aspect of it as well, that how you can make sure that what are the key things that you need to look for to be able to make sure that you get the best out of this outsourcing model as well. So let's first talk about the expertise section. The biggest challenge is that the SMEs don't just need accountants. They need somebody who is experienced, who is a qualified professional, who can provide them a business advisory service. 
Now, the, uh, the challenge is that you don't have the funds or you don't have the ability to hire such a person who is more experienced, who's professionally qualified on a full-time basis, because really there is no that, not that much of a need for a full-time uh, work on that level. So the challenge is, is to be able to manage the time requirement versus the cost requirement as well. So, and a lot of times where uh, most of the businesses are not able to get the benefits is because they are only hiring junior level accountants to help them accounting, which act only as their day-to-day -day accounting transaction processes. They're not able to provide the business advisory service because you need a person who's very experienced and qualified to be able to give that. So the challenge for the outro, uh, for the uh, model is that how do you how are you able to outsource the service as well as get the benefit of a business advisor uh, and the other aspect of it is that even if you hire those junior resources because you don't have the ability to supervise their work because you don't have the accounting background there's always that risk of making mistakes and the more inexperienced and the lower costly uh, this, those resources are the higher the risk of making those mistakes so the advantage of having an outsource model as a solution for you is that you are working with a company that has variety of level of expertise and qualifications available. So you have got the owners and the partners, which are qualified professionals with multiple years of experience, 10, 15, 20 years of experience. And they are then working with different levels of accounting, accounting layers of personnel. With, and there is a quality assurance and there is a review process involved. So the chances of mistakes significantly go down. So when you are working in an outsource model and you work, so the, one of the things that you need to look for is that you are working with a, with a company where you've got a CV, you've got the uh, data of, uh, or the bio data of the kind of people who are working on your account. So you need to look at their expertise, look at their qualifications, look at their experience level so that you can get that benefit and make sure there is a quality control process in, in place so that you can avoid those mistakes. Uh, in terms of managing the cost, I would recommend that one of the, uh, the best ways to manage that in terms of your budgeting as well, in terms of your manageability of cost is to look for fixed fee packages rather than go with the traditional model of hourly rates. Because our, a lot of times people fall into that trap because in order to get the uh, time from the senior people and a, and a mixture of time be between the senior people and the junior staff from the outsource company, they go for an hourly rate. And the, the hourly rate is different from, the, from based upon the seniority of the people. Uh, but our recommendation is that if you want to get the best manageability in terms of being able to be budgeting your cost, keeping them uh, at a certain level and still be able to get that benefit of the advisory service, look for a fixed fee package in which there is some time from the senior professionals to add value as a business advisor as well. So it's a combination of the fee, uh, time from your junior accountants that are doing the day-to-day -day transaction entry and data entry process, as well as there is a time from the senior professional in two ways. One is a quality control process. So there is a, a reduced uh, risk of making any mistakes. So the product that finally comes to your business, uh, it has gone through a review of the senior, uh, senior professionals, qualified professionals. So the mistakes have been corrected already. And secondly, you is, on top of that, you want to have some one-on-one -on -one times with the senior uh, professional at that company so that you can uh, get some business advisory based upon the accounting results. And I always say that uh, I had, a, when I was doing my uh, college education, I did double majors. I did accounting and finance. And whenever people used to ask me that, why did you choose both, uh, both similar majors? I said, accounting tells me how to get the numbers. And finance tell me, tells me or teaches me of what to do with those numbers once I have them. So this is where, similarly, you have to think about that outsourcing model. It's not just about getting the accounting numbers. You want to have the advisory service of the senior professionals on what to do with those numbers. Have some analysis presented to you. Have some advice or, or recommendations presented to you on what, how you can make your business decisions better. What can you do better for your business in terms of it could be cash flow management, it could be your margin management, it could be your EBITDA uh, controls as well, it could be your financial controls as well. So any level of advisory service, you need to make sure that you get a mixture of both. You get not just the accounting entries and the financial statements prepared, but you get some analysis level, so some time from the senior professionals as well. And having a combination of both of those, that is what will give you a maximum benefit of the outsource model. 
Next is business growth. Now, the challenge with that is that if you have in-house team, you have only a limited time to focus on your business growth and at the same time trying to increase at the, at the accounting resources that you have. A lot of time, the business owners don't think of that. They, 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 when they think about growing their business, they, talk, they think about the sales team, they think about the marketing, they think about the business development team. Accounting team is, their, is the least priority over there. And a lot of times what happens is that becomes the bottleneck in terms of your business growth because the volume of activity, the nature and complexity of the growth is not being able to be handled by the in-house team. They're not well equipped for it. So the, the accounting resources actually become a lagging uh, uh, hurdle for the business to grow. Similarly, if the business owner is having to spend time in managing the accounting resources because they have got some junior accountants in-house, that takes away time and their focus from the business growth as well. So they need to be able to focus entirely on growing their business and making it much more sustainable and having the comfort that the accounting resources will go up and down according to their requirements as, as they feel it. So, uh, so that's one of the challenges. Another challenge is that uh, in order to be able to grow your business, you don't need just the accounting entries. You need that financial information in a reliable and timely way. And then you need it in a form or in a way presented to you that helps you in making those business decisions as well in terms of your business growth and your strategy. So a lot of times account junior accountants are only able to prepare the financial, traditional financial statements, which is in the accounting standards format. A lot of the business owners are not very familiar with that format or are not very familiar on how to use that format. So this is the big challenge in terms of having the outsource accounting and not having an in-house team that can help you with the business. And the way to work around that with your outsourcing model is that you should, when you're selecting your outsource company uh, partner, you need to look at their scalability and their business model as well. Are they able to scale up the resources according to your business needs so that you can grow your business regardless of the accounting partner? So you can grow your business as aggressively as you want, having the comfort that if, if you go for a very aggressive growth model, your accounting service provider can follow you in the same path. Even if they are not able to follow you in the same path, you always, with the outsource model, you always have the ability to switch an accounting service partner to another one. So that gives you the ability because the service level contract, SLA agreement that you do with the outsource partner, there is not a full-time employee. So it's not adding employee resources. You can move to a, uh, from a smaller company or a, from a boutique company, you can move to a larger firm as well. So that ability is there if you have a very aggressive growth plan. Uh, so that's the uh, one aspect that I would say to look out for when you're selecting your outsource partner. Similarly, look for, uh, like I mentioned, that you know, lo you're looking for that business advisory service. So you're looking for uh, and agree this upfront with the outsource uh, service provider as well, that you're not just sharing the traditional financial statements as the balance sheet, cash flow, and the profit loss statement. You are sharing some useful business insights and business reports that the business owner can actually use and be able to make those business decisions for him in a much better and informed way. So that is one of the other requirements that I would recommend that you look for in your outsourcing model that don't just, when you are signing up the agreement, don't just look at the accounting uh, statements that they would provide and the accounting entries in a software. Look for some kind of a value added reporting system where the information will be presented to you in a user-friendly layman language terms. In terms of compliance, now, uh, as we all know, in this region with the VAT laws and now with the ESR regulations, with the ultimate beneficiary owners uh, requirement, with the OECD agreements, compliance is becoming much more complex, not just from the federal tax authority point of view, not just from the business uh, regulations point of view, also from the banking point of view as well. The banking sector is also now under a lot of pressure in terms of their KYC requirements on a regular basis, which gets updated in terms of the business transaction actions that are for certain requirements to make sure that their compliance department is satisfied. So compliance is now becoming a very hot topic and something of, of a much bigger need than it was before. And the, uh, the other side of that is that non-compliances carry very heavy penalties and risks. 
what we have experienced so far with many different companies that have come to us uh, much later in the game after they have been hit with penalties is that the government and the regulators are very strict in terms of these penalties and they are very very non considerate in terms of uh, waiving off any penalties or reducing any penalties they go with maximum level of penalties and a lot of these penalties for vat payments are on a per day basis and they go as much as 300% of the actual tax liability so the risk of non compliance is something which is which most of the sme sector can no longer afford and therefore it's the same thing that you can no longer afford to be able to continue to make mistakes for a longer period of time while you think that everything is fine and nobody has caught it and then after several years some uh, some authorities do an audit and they catch it and they start levying penalties from day one so that is a much bigger is much heavier penalty uh, so that's the risk uh, of compliance and then again uh, if you if the business owner tries to understand the regulations look at uh, get themselves updated look at uh, those kind of compliance on their own that again takes away time from their core business and from the growth uh, from the strategic point of view and also because of the ex ex expertise nature or let's say a specialized nature of these regulations uh, it becomes difficult for business owners to keep themselves up to date on these latest changes even if they are up to date uh, i mean it's it's uh, it's something that we have experienced not just in this region but across the globe these regulations the way they are worded the way they are written it's not for a common person to be able to fully understand and interpret them correctly as well so that is why also even if the business owner is able to get the latest uh, changes and the regulations themselves it's not that they can simply read it like a normal english language and be able to understand what the implications are of their business there's a lot of interpretation that is taken into account that needs to be done so therefore uh, the uh, that is one of the big challenge in terms of uh, being able to stay compliant Uh, in this region while these change laws and uh, regulations are constantly changing so having an experience and a professional uh, outro service partner that can help you stay compliant is very important because uh, these experienced professionals are not only up to date on the latest changes that are happening they make sure that their employees are fully trained because if you are a professional accountant so for example i am a professional cpa and a chartered global management account uh, accountant i have a requirement in order to maintain my qualifications i need to have certain continuing professional education number of hours every year and i need to report the, those to the uh, institutes that i am i'm a member of so these professionals have a obligation to continue to get some uh, continuing education and uh, keeping themselves up to date and trained so not just the top professionals uh, their accounting staff if they are qualified and that is one of the reasons why i mentioned that you look at the people that are working in your outsource company if there are fully qualified people then they that, that is another way to make sure that there is a quality assurance program in place because a lot of these professional organizations would require them to go through continuing professional education and that would make sure that these people are all, always up to date well trained on the uh, latest laws and regulations and the latest accounting standards and having th those kind of people work with you which are up to date which are fully trained which are qualified professionals gives you the comfort that they are keeping all of your accounting records all of your accounting entries all of your financial information uh, in a compliant way and uh, so you don't have to worry about the penalties okay in terms of technological innovation now what is happening is that the traditional way a lot of these accountants were working even in house and even with the outsource service provider they would buy a desktop level package which is a one time price that they would pay they will buy an accounting package and they will have their inter internal accounting team work on that or even in the outsource company they will have a big package so that they don't have to buy a lot of licenses so they will buy a one time package or develop something in house and then all of their accounting teams and transactions will be done on that now the Uh, the limitation of that is that even if you buy a top tier high level accounting package the desktop version is not going to get updated with the latest features and latest uh, innovations in the processes as the business is growing you need to make sure that your accounting processes are being in, uh, run in a most cost effective way wherever wherever the automation can be done is being done wherever the efficiencies are there can be done 
So a lot of these desktop versions of the software are not able to cater to, the, to that because there are one-time investment for several years ago. So a lot of these softwares would be several of uh, four, five, or seven, seven, eight years old, and they're not regularly updated. So one of the solutions which I would recommend is that whenever you are selecting an outsource service partner, you look at the kind of accounting software that they are using and make sure that they're using a cloud-based software. There are two advantages that you will get from that. Uh, one, it will be always backed up into multiple uh, cloud-based servers across the globe. So you, you, you will never lose your data. Uh, so, you know, if there is a, a bug in the server at the, at the company side, if it's a local software, if there is a crash or if there, there's any problem, you don't end up losing data for your clients. So if it's a cloud-based software, first of all, it is always backed up in multiple different locations across the globe. And it is always up to date with the latest features. So the, uh, the uh, disadvantage is that the cloud-based software comes with a monthly subscription. So it's something that you pay on a regular basis. So even if the outsource company is using it, they pay a monthly subscription fee for that. It's usually a very small fee compared to the advantages. But the advantages are that you get a fully backed up system. Uh, you don't lose data. And all of these softwares, if you go with a good quality software, they continue to enhance and give more updates and more features which are, which are regularly uh, added to the software without any additional cost. So the advantage of that is, the, for example, in, this re in, in the US region, a lot of the softwares have the ability to directly connect to the bank account and download the transactions on a daily basis. So all you have to do is point, the accountant needs to just point it to the right direction and then post it to the current account and the correct financial uh, statement. Now, instead of entering a lot of data entry, a lot of data entry from the bank statement would come automatically. Now, this is also becoming popular in this region. A lot of the banks are now giving these top tier softwares ability to access their servers with a one-way communication. So no transaction can happen. So it's fully secure. And it's a one-way uh, transaction deal that they would just download the data from the bank statements to, your, uh, to the accounting uh, company's software. And the accounting company will be able to save a lot of data entry time. So uh, these kind of features, a lot of times they do a lot of uh, features like if you create a purchase order in the system, it will automatically allow you to copy that into a bill and then automatically allow you to make a payment from that. So a lot of these accounting features, accounting processes, automation and efficiency needs to be done. And that gets done and updated on a cloud-based solution. That does two things for you. First of all, it enhances the controls and uh, ability to make mistakes go down. Secondly, because of the efficiency aspect of it, because of the reduced amount of data entry required and manual in intervention required, it keeps the cost of the outsource service uh, provider partner with an outsource service provider which uses a cloud-based solution they will have a better ability to keep your cost of the outsource service lower and much manageable uh, compared to a company which is using a desktop or a traditional software or an in-house developed software so that is something that you need to look for uh, also you know when the small businesses are growing uh, they are in a growth mode. Uh, they are aggressively uh, uh, focusing on the sales and business development. The accounting processes are usually their last priority. So having this kind of a, a partner with you, which, ha which has these automated processes in the system, will keep on giving you the ability that you are using and utilizing the best features and the latest features available to you. Now, for example, going forward, a lot of these cloud-based softwares are, are building in artificial intelligence capabilities into the software as well, and they get regularly updated too. So that is not something that you need to invest separately on, or you need to uh, focus on separately as a business owner, because you may not even be aware of these kind of uh, solutions available. But if you're a workers provider who are, who's up to date, who's using a software, which is the latest one, and a cloud-based software, they will be able to leverage that technology information as well. So that is in terms of technological innovation. Okay. So if you sum it up, uh, there are basically five uh, aspects of value proposition that you get when you outsource uh, your complete accounting and uh, uh, bookkeeping services to a good outsource service provider. First of all, it will be more affordable. So the cost aspect is there. It, if, if you have a good service provider who's got a cloud-based software, who's got professionally qualified people, uh, they will make less mistakes. Their processes will be much more efficient. 
uh, they will require less supervision and correction of mistakes. So even their internal processes will be less costly and therefore the cost to you would be less as well. So they become much more affordable. Again, look for a fixed fee solution where there is a, a, there is a combination of time from the senior resource as well as from the regular accounting data entry providers as well. Second advantage is it is very scalable. It can go up and down as per your requirements of the business. Uh, even if your service provider is not able to match the growth of your business, you can switch to another service provider. So that, that still keeps, gives you that ability and flexibility. Uh, compliance becomes much more easy for you because uh, you can just rely completely on the accounting service provider uh, for making sure that all the, your accounting records, all the documentation, all the process, everything is fully compliant. Uh, just to give you an, a simple example of the cost of non-compliance, uh, uh, as, as per the VAT laws, uh, the cabinet approved the penalties. If there is one small error, so for example, if you use the incorrect exchange rate on your invoice, the penalty for that is 1,000 dirham per invoice. Now imagine the number of invoices you issue in a year and multiply that by 1,000. That is the fixed amount of penalty that the law has authorized uh, federal tax authority to impose on non-compliant invoices. Now, every single time a person is uh, uh, charging VAT on invoices, there is a, uh, about 10 to 12 requirements of what each of the invoice needs to show. If you miss something, if you, if you miss one small thing, the penalty is still 1,000 dirham per document. It is not per type of uh, non-compliance. It is per document. So if you issued 1,000 uh, uh, invoices in a year, and if, if all of those had one small error, that's 1,000 multiplied by 1,000. So almost 100,000 dirham penalty on uh, for non-compliance. So being fully compliant is definitely something that needs to be done and uh, catered for on a proactive basis, not something that you discover later on once a penalty has been uh, uh, imposed on you. Uh, innovative, uh, we talked about that in terms of technological innovation, your accounting processes, having a cloud-based software, making sure that you're, they're working with a good quality software. So they're working with uh, some of the top quality, which is QuickBooks, uh, there is Xero, uh, there is Zoho Books. Uh, so these are the top three ones in this region so far. So they are top tier uh, softwares, which are regularly updating themselves. Another advantage of these kind of softwares is they are, as the VAT laws are changing, they're also updating their software so that you can, they, they, they are already uh, customized. So for example, when you set up the region uh, as UAE in those softwares, you are able to use the VAT laws which are applicable and they're able to give a lot of features as, as the VAT laws are changing as well. So that software keeps themselves updated and uh, provides you better chance of being compliant and using the features of the uh, to stay uh, up to date on VAT laws as well. And so overall, it's a good value for money, especially if you're able to make sure that the package that you are getting from your service provider includes affordable cost, includes the ability for you to have scalability. You've got a good quality assurance program with them in terms of having uh, make sure making sure that they've got qualified professionals. They're using a cloud-based up-to-date, a good quality software. And you are able to get some quality time from the senior resources. It doesn't have to be on a full-time basis. It could be a couple of hours per week as well. It could be a few hours per month as well. But you make sure that you get that time from senior resource. And if you're able to get that time, in my opinion, that is the biggest value for money that you will have for your outsourcing model. So if you're able to capture these five things and make sure that your outsource solution which with whichever partner that you are working with has all of these five features embedded in them, then I think you will have a, lot, a very successful outsourcing model where you will be able to uh, achieve uh, not only the soft ROIs, but the hard ROIs as well that we talked about in the first uh, couple of slides. So that's it from my side. Uh, thank you for listening in to me and uh, let's open it up for any questions or any specific uh, concerns you may have. You can use the raise hand feature. And you can uh, put in your questions in the chat bar as well, whichever way you feel uh, more comfortable.
Um, hi, yes, Father. I have a question. So, um, how do you know when the source service is? I, I have a sense that uh, you know companies who are providing this specialty service um, should be considerate of the size of the business they are, they are supporting, right? So, um, would you say um, a price for the volume of work that goes in, or a price to reflect the business value you are supporting is best? That's a very good question, Paul. Uh, so. A lot of times, uh, a lot of the companies ask for your uh, financial numbers or your uh, revenue number or your uh, profit number. And my recommendation is that that is not a good indicator of providing the right value for money and right service because you can have five transactions, five invoices in a year, each invoice worth 1 million dirham and the revenue would be 5 million dirham. Or you can have 5,000 invoices in a year for the same value so in my opinion what i would recommend is that you go with a company that looks at the volume of work the number of transactions rather than the value because for for the accountant if they are making one invoice punching in one million dirham takes about the same amount of time as punching in one thousand dirham right it's the number of transactions that they have to create in the system so look for the volume of work so again, uh, so when we uh, uh, make a proposal for our clients, we look we'll look at the volume of work, uh, how many number of invoices they would be issuing in a month, how many bills they would be paying in a month, how many salaries they would be paying, how many interbank transfers, how many bank accounts do they have, how many currencies they have. So this is the kind of information you should be looking at to evaluate the costing side of it. Okay, so um, if you uh, like a follow-up to the question, right? If you are a small business, dealing in very, very small uh, uh, prized items, you know, one dirham, uh, 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 and you have millions and millions of transactions of these one, one dirham transactions, uh, how, how, where do you draw the line in accounting costs, right? So the accountant's time may be worth uh, more than half of that in terms of efforts to go into, you know, logging all of these single one dirham entries. So where do you draw the line in, in, in terms of how much the account I want to charge compared to the real value of what you're running as a business? Great. So the easy way to calculate that, uh, where do you draw the line is that you have the volume of work you, so you, you know the number of invoices you would need to uh, create or number of transactions you would need to do on a monthly basis. And how many accountants would you need in-house for them and what, is the, what would they cost? And then get a proposal and a quotation from a couple of uh, two or three service providers with the same level of volume of work you provide to them and see what do they get. If you see the differential is getting closer to the in-house team, then what I would recommend is that you can do a hybrid model, which I'm talking about the co-sourcing model. You can have your in-house accountant, junior level accountants to do the data entry. You can outsource the CFO level services or a review service to an outsource service provider that I will have my accountants do the data entry. Once they finish the data entry on a monthly basis, they will let you know. You go in, you log in into our system and you review their work. You make sure that they have not made any mistakes. You review the financial statements and you give me your insight on what do I need to do. So you get that, that, that kind of a hybrid system. If the cost of data entry and versus uh, from a outsource service provider is pretty much similar to the cost of data entry for your in-house team, then you can go with that kind of a hybrid model. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. Any other questions? Hi, so I'm Arthi here and I'm yes, dialing in from India. So we uh, kind of work on the same line where we have a platform and we offer services to startup SMEs where we take care of their accounting compliance and we kind of pitch on the similar line saying that, you know, that cost technology professionals. But it's very difficult that we have noticed where, you know, people are open to giving up their accounting and compliance. They are okay with doing with just one accountant on board. So I just want, I mean, in-house. So I just want to understand how easy it is in UAE or are there any thoughts around it that, you know, how do you convince your client better to go ahead with the outsourcing of the accounting? 
I mean, anything that you have, you know, kind of experienced from the past, I would just like to hear your thoughts on that. Yes, Aarti. So basically what is happening is that most of the companies that are not able to get convinced are the companies who are still looking at the traditional model of outsourcing, where they're looking at their in-house accountant costs versus the outsource services accountant cost. The real game changer and the real convincing happens on the value addition aspect of it. So for example, the cost of non-compliance, which I mentioned, that if they, if they don't outsource that accountant level service to a company where there is supervision by a higher quality professional to make sure that the mistakes are not happening, then they are carrying in their business the high risk of non-compliance. So one of the real big risks in the UAE is the, the risk of penalties for non-compliance. So that one aspect is there. The second big aspect is the value addition from a, a qualified, profession, experienced professional. Uh, if they trade, if the business owner is only looking at account as accounting equals to data entry, then yes, they will, it will be very difficult for them to get convinced. They can just hire a low cost resource and then do the data entry themselves. But the real value on account from the accounting side comes from the business advisory service. And that is where we pitch into our clients to convince them that we don't just act as an accountant, we act as your business advisor. So we actually go above and beyond our accounting agreement. Okay. When we look at, so for example, I'll give you a small example just to show you. Uh, when we, I was reviewing one of the account, uh, accounting statements for uh, one of my clients which my team had prepared, I noticed that there was a lot of charges uh, being uh, charged as bank charges for uh, ATM cash withdrawal from a credit card. So as, account, as a normal accountant, we would just record that as bank charges and send the statements to the uh, financial statements to the client. As a business advisor, what I was able to coach and it was an expat, uh, it was an uh, engineering consultant who travels around the world into mm -hmm. multiple different kinds of projects. So what I was able to give advice to him was instead of using your credit card to withdraw cash from the ATM machines of these different countries, that would give you not just the ATM withdrawal charge, but also interest charge on the credit card. Use your debit card to withdraw the same amount of money from the same bank account. Okay. That would significantly reduce your charges. That is the level of business advisory service that we give above and beyond just being accountants. So if you're able to con add, show that value addition to your clients and provide that level of service, that mm -hmm. is where you can uh, have that convincing to switch over. Okay, thank you. Are there any other questions? I don't see anybody else raising hands. Uh, Morning. All right. Um, yeah. I think if there are no yeah. other questions, uh, maybe Zed, you can conclude the session. Um, thank sure. you so much for uh, you know sharing the presentation and your insights, and thank you everyone for asking questions and participating. Absolutely. And if you have any questions, we are available. You can uh, connect with us on LinkedIn and uh, send a message across, and we will be happy to uh, discuss these for the video. Thank you so much, everyone, for coming in today. Yeah, thank you. Thank, Thank you, Zaid. Thank you. Bye-bye. Thank you so much. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.